Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at list views in Android. So um, there are a few more changes that I want to make to my Note Squirrel application but before I go ahead and make them I want to look at a few other concepts in Android programming. So um, a list view is uh, a view control that enables you to enables the user to choose between um, different possibilities basically and uh, there's also a spinner view where you can select from a drop down list but a list view just displays your options um, right in front of you so um, let's take a look at, at an example here and I've got um, I've got a basic application a hello world Android application set up here and uh, just a, a new project and in the um, layout here I'm going to create a list view so I've got rid of the hello world text view there that comes in there by default and I'm just going to create a list view here so let's just close this and I'll give this an ID um, so I'll press control space to autocomplete this and once again to get the um, kind of at symbol plus ID slash and since there's only, only going to be one list view in this application I'll just call this list but of course normally you'd want to give your list view an ID that was more descriptive of what it did in particular okay so um, I also need to well let's change this to um, linear layout actually and I'll make this linear layout and um, a, linear lay a linear layout has an orientation so I'll set the orientation here to vertical and I'll set the layout width here to um, let's set it to match parent and the layout height I'll set it to wrap content and if you forget the um, layout width or layout height when you run your when you run your program it's probably going to say something like unfortunately the application has stopped and you can get to the bottom of the problem by going to DDMS um, or this tab here and looking at logcat and scrolling up right to the top of the red error text and there you'll usually find something informative now I need to supply this list view with some items to put in it and the simplest possible um, option here is just to give it a few hard-coded strings to put in it and we'll look at some more complicated options um, following this tutorial but for the moment let's just have some hard-coded strings so I want an array of strings that this list view will display basically and I'm going to go to strings.xml which is the proper place to put any kind of string that the user might actually see and I'll go to the um, kind of Eclipse view of it and now so far we've been adding just single string values to this string.xml um, but um, now I want to add an array of strings and to do that click the add button and I'll go to string array here click OK and I'll give this a name and I'll just call it list options and again I'd normally give this something uh, more descriptive but um, this is just a sample application with one list in it so I'll just say list options here and then with that selected I'll click add and I'll click item here and I'll give this item a value I'll give it the, the value Bob I'll just give it a name for want of something to put in it and I click add again and let's say Sue and whoops actually I need to add an item first then I can give it a name um, a value actually Sue and let's click add again and have another item which I'll give the value Mike and I'll save that and I'll go to strings.xml I'll go to like the raw view of this XML file and you can see that it's added this string hyphen array tag with a bunch of item sub tags and with the name that I specified and of course you can type that by hand if you want to you don't have to use this um, kind of user interface to the strings.xml and to get those into my list I go to um, my layout here and in this list view I say entries and I'll autocomplete that to Android colon entries 
and I press control space again and I need this um, not the um, at sign string as I've used before but this time the at sign array because we're dealing with an array of strings here and if I press control space again with the cursor right there it's going to autocomplete the name of my list and if you had multiple um, possible lists to autocomplete you would see um, a list of possible options at that point. Now if I run this we're already going to see my um, list so I'll click run there and the other important thing to do with lists of course is you want to know when the user has uh, touched, has clicked a particular option and to find out what the user um, clicks I need to add some code in my corresponding activity the activity that corresponds to this layout here so um, I'll add a, a method to put it in here I'll create a method called set um, list listener and let's implement that method so in fact if I click this uh, warning icon here and just go to create method set list listener and that will create my method for me which could save you some time and in here and let's just let's just take a look at the application now it's running so there's my list and I can select different items in it and now I want to add the code that will tell me uh, which one's actually being clicked so in here and you sort of know the drill by now I need to create a variable of type list view which I'll just call list here again since there's only one and set that equal to the return value cast to a list view of find view by id and here I supply r id dot and in this case list because that's the name that I gave to the list view um, right uh, right here that's its name and once I've got my list I can say list dot set um, on um, on item click listener there's a lot of different kind of listeners that you the autocomplete brings up here but you need to get the right one get the don't use the on click listener use the on item click listener because you want to know when an item has been clicked and um, you can see that accepts a on item click listener so I'm going to say here new on item and I'll use the um, autocomplete again on item click listener and I'll put the semicolon in there and add any imports with Control shift and O and just save that and then I'll click this error and I'll go to add unimplemented methods there we go and just to remind you uh, control space is the autocomplete um, and I, I use it all the time because it saves you a huge amount of time now uh, the two arguments that we're going to use here are uh, are going to be this one so I'm going to give this a sensible name I'm going to call it adapter because it's an adapter view which I'll explain in just a second and I'm going to use um, this one here I think that's the one I want which I'm going to call um, pause, um, which is short for position. Now, um, the position here is the position in the list of the the item that's clicked. So let's have some debug here. Let's say, um, or I could use a toast actually. That would be equally good. Um, let's say toast dot uh, make text this and the text I'll say pause and add on the position there and then let's add on the um, value and um, now to get the actual value of the item from the list uh, well that's um, let's just add some dummy quotes empty quotes for a moment is uh, it's not something that you um, perhaps usually want to do because often what you want to do is you want to put something other than strings in this list which we'll get onto shortly and you want to get some kind of ID for that item um, because the, the, the value in this case that we could get um, is um, the, the, only I kind of, the only kind of value that the items have is the actual text that each item displays Bob, Sue or Mike in this case and getting the actual user interface text isn't usually much use because you want to avoid kind of having your code rely on actual text that the user sees because you might want to change um, the text that the user sees and you want your code to carry on working 
so you don't normally deal with actual values but just for fun here let's get the actual text that the user um, selects by clicking so uh, so that's the that's the position um, in the list and in fact what it is 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 it's the uh, position within um, the items that the uh, the list of the array of items that the list is displaying so um, and this adapter what this is um, is it's a thing that takes um, kind of um, in this case it's taking the array of strings and it's turning them into list items so it's adapting the strings to list items if you like um, because the actual widgets in the list are kind of list items and the things that I've supplied are strings and this adapter class kind of translates from one to the other and we can use that to get the actual um, value that the user sees uh, by saying uh, adapter dot um, because that's the name I gave to the local variable here adapter dot get um, item at position and here I can just put in the position which I call pause and let's just put a semicolon on the end there um, so I'll maximize that and save it uh, I think I did something wrong here but I'm not quite sure what so let's take a look at the um, error oh yeah I need to fill in the duration for the toast so I'll say toast.length short and let's put show in there and let's finally run that and um, still some error here um, I think that should be okay so I've got this oh yeah it's um, I need to put in here I, I often forget this main activity dot this because here I'm in I'm in a method of an anonymous class so this would refer to the unnamed class um, that this object here belongs to um, and I want the enclosing object main activity okay so that looks good um, and let's run this and let's just take a look here at the console now uh, if, if um, you, you're kind of still unclear about what this adapter is don't worry because there's we're going to cover this more in um, in future tutorials but um, as I say basically it's just transforming a list of strings into items in the list so um, let's take a look so this is starting and um, I'll take a look at my emulator here and as it started or are we still looking at the last one I think it is good let's try clicking it yep so there I go um, and the value is, is zero here did I do something wrong um, I think oh yeah I, I called get item ID at position uh, and that's getting me an ID for the item but what I really want is get item um, at position there we go so I want to get the item itself and because I added strings to this list the items will be strings so finally let's try running this again and this time hopefully it should actually work so installing and uh, we're going to move on to looking at how you can uh, render the list items in the way that you like and add icons to them and things like that um, but I thought I'd keep it simple for this initial tutorial so now let's click an item and there we've got the position is zero in the list and the value is Bob and you see it works for the other items too whoops let's click Sue and my um, toasts are kind of queuing up here try Bob again and Mike which is at position two because they're zero based okay so that's it for this tutorial and we're gonna take a, a bit more of a look at this in the next tutorial before eventually going back to our note squirrel application and then moving on to some um, even more exciting things uh, but that's it for now and until next time happy coding